This is KGW News at Sunrise. First step five, a huge financial hit for a Portland City Council candidate. Why and how much Renee Gonzalez is being fined for violating campaign finance laws. Plus. There are some people that can't taste the smoke at all. There are a lot of people that find it super intense. Yeah, wildfire smoke can really change the way wine tastes. So how does it really happen? Coming up, researchers from Oregon State walk us through what they've found. Also coming up, a new addition in the Sunrise series we call What's in a Name? This morning, <laughs> Devin Haskins takes us to Lane County to highlight a small town named by a blacksmith, but it's who he named the town after that makes this story most interesting. Huh. We have that coming up at 515. I have no idea where that's going. Look mm. forward to seeing it. Yeah. Hey, happy last morning of summer. Mm -hmm. Fall. Yeah. I saw you had to walk day. through that. Yeah, because yeah. 603 it officially, right? So it's, it's summer this morning. It's summer this afternoon. You're walking your dog after dinner tonight, 6.03, and then it hits you. Bam. It's the fall season. <laughs> All right, let's get you going right now. We have an upper level low that we've been tracking. I mean, it dropped down the coast, went into California, came back up to the north. Now it's all the way out here, Lewiston getting some rain. Having a hard time finding anybody picking up what you see on radar in terms of uh, surface sites saying, yeah, it's raining. There's been, according to radar, some light rain in the gorge and right now up around Mount Hood, that's all dropping down to the south. So for the most part, here in the valley, we'll be dry today. A mostly cloudy or a mix of cloudiness to start out the door. Temperatures 56 right now. Basically, partly cloudy to increasing sun. A nice day coming, 75 at 5 p.m. as you toast summer away <laughs> and wait for that magical 6.03 moment mm. of the autumnal equinox. Back to you. Thank you, Rod. Less than two months from Election Day and a candidate in one of Portland's key city council races is facing a huge fine. The city ordered Renee Gonzalez to pay more than $77,000 for accepting and not reporting a substantial discount on his campaign office space downtown. Records show the Gonzalez campaign paid only $250 a month to rent office space that would normally cost almost $7,000 a month. So the office space is owned by Schnitzer Properties Management. Campaign finance records show that Jordan Schnitzer donated $250 to the Gonzalez campaign. $250 is the maximum amount allowed for an individual donation. But here's the deal. One day before making that donation, Schnitzer Properties also leased out that office space to Gonzalez at a nearly 96% discount. The director of Portland's Small Donor Elections Program says the discount represents an illegal contribution and violates campaign finance laws. When you violate the prohibition on large contributions and accept a contribution you know, of $33,000, um, that goes against point of the program to ensure our democracy is strong and healthy and accountable to the people. In a written response, a spokesperson for the Gonzalez campaign said, quote, we strongly disagree that the rent is too low given the dismal state of downtown and landlords are desperate to get any kind of compensation for their space right now. The Gonzalez campaign has two weeks to appeal the fine. Let's get you caught up on some of the other headlines we're following this morning. Starting with a monkeypox update. Oregon health officials have confirmed the state's second infection in a child. They say it's not linked to a school or a child care center or other community setting. Monkeypox mainly spreads through skin to skin contact. Health officials aren't specifying how the child contracted the disease. Lake Oswego police are warning people about a phone scammer impersonating a police officer. Investigators say the person calling identifies himself as Sergeant Tom Harper and has a southern accent. He warns whoever picks up the phone that they've missed a court date and suggests the person pay him directly to clear up outstanding arrest warrants. The scammer has also been leaving voicemails with a bogus number. Lake Oswego police say just hang up and then report the call to their non-emergency number. 
Milo McIver State Park in Clackamas County has partially reopened after a wildfire earlier this month. The campground reopens tomorrow, but the Riverbend side and the disc golf field will remain closed until further notice. The cause of this fire is still under investigation. And those are some of your Thursday morning headlines. Well, speaking of wildfires, the smoke from them has been a real struggle to deal with for wineries over the past few years. All the particulate in the air can really hurt the vines and the grapes, and in some cases, you can actually taste it in the wine. Now, Oregon State researchers are trying to figure out why. Here's Joe Ranieri. Wineries from all over the West Coast over the last couple of years have lost billions of dollars from smoke damage coming from wildfires. Well, it's at this winery just south of Corvallis where researchers are trying to determine what is in the smoke that is so damaging to these grapes. Researchers simulate wildfire smoke by using this Weber grill barley as a fuel source and some ducting equipment. From the source, the smoke is gonna plume up, fan's gonna push it in. The smoke itself is going to attach itself to the skin of the grapes on here. For the last couple of years, Cole Serrato with Oregon State University has been behind research at the Woodhall III Vineyard in Monroe. These compounds, we would call it hydrophobic. They, they're not a huge fan of water, just like the skins are on the grapes. Hydrophobic, not a huge fan of water, so they connect together. He's been trying to determine what compound in smoke that can contribute to smoke getting into grapes and wine. Serato says they have discovered red wine is especially vulnerable to smoke from wildfires. As they are sitting on the skin, that is where a lot of those smoke compounds are occurring. There can be some pass through or some amount of bleed off as we are going through the fermentation process. They also found that not everyone has the same palate when it comes to wine. So it's a very large variance in people. There are some people that can't taste the smoke at all. There are a lot of people that find it super intense and then it can vary very much in between there. Jenna Fryer is a graduate research assistant with Oregon State University. She's responsible for seeing what flavors are in the grapes. It's a very individualistic thing. So that's something that we're trying to figure out is how much that individual preference and individual sensitivity has on their perception of these wines. Well, they know smoke can alter the taste. The chemistry can somewhat change the flavor of it, sometimes for the better, sometimes not. And that's another thing that we're trying to figure out as well, is that fermentation interaction between the smoke. They also want to know what's occurring when the smoke and these grapes mix together. Near Corvallis, Joe Ranieri, KGW News. All right, before we get back to Mr. Rodney Hill, we do want to bring up the fact again that today, later today, is the start of fall. And we're kicking off the Look fall at season. This. this is pretty awesome, That's right? That's awesome. Brand new pumpkin patch. This is a brand new pumpkin oh. patch in Wilsonville. Sunrise photographer Eric Patterson out live at yesteryear pumpkin patch and Christmas trees. Now well, you can't put those two in the same well, sentence. Well, you know what it is, Can Brenda? You? I'll the tell farm. You, I'll tell you why they have that name. <laughs> They've always done Christmas trees, at least for the last four years, they've been doing Christmas trees. They decided this year, let's open up during October to do some pumpkins. Nice. So now they're adding to the name, yesteryear, pumpkin patch, and Christmas trees. <laughs> uh, no entry fee, by the way, to check out this pumpkin patch. Lots more information, including activities at yesteryeartreefarm.com. Yeah, we'll be looking live at them all morning long. Looks like they've worked hard. Make that a great place to visit. Okay, look at this on Facebook. We ask you, what's your favorite part of fall season? Let's hear some of your comments. I'm going to read Carrie's. The changing of the colors, but I don't like when the leaves fall, right? <laughs> a lot of yard work. I hear you. Yeah. Uh, Teresa says sweaters. sweaters. Just plain sweater, and simple. Sweater. And then Chris says the end of the heat. As I like to say, you can always put more on, but you can only take so much off before you get arrested. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> and Emily says pumpkin patches. You'll like our show today. And finally, we have this one from Diane. Not watering all my planters, baskets and shrubs by hand, but oh, how I love watching them grow and bloom. All good comments. Yeah. Keep them coming. We'll read some more later in the show. I feel the same way about the you can always put more on, but you can only take so much off. Because <laughs> even like during the summer when it's a hot day, and you're laying in bed, you're like, man, it is still hot outside. You're like, what can you do? You can only get down to so much. But in the winter time, if you're cold, <laughs> you just keep piling up those blankets. Yeah. <laughs> I do like stepping out without a coat on. I, I don't like the, I got the coat and the gloves and the yes. boots. It's like I can barely get myself out the door. <laughs> Wait a minute, this is the first day of fall. Bob and I are going to retire <laughs> in Arizona. <laughs> hey, by the way, so 603, and we think of the autumnal equinox. Equinox meaning equal, and 
taken as a whole on our globe, 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of darkness. Now for us today, 658 sunrise, 708 sunset. So we will still have more daylight than darkness again tomorrow. I think it's, it's either Saturday or Sunday that we flip that and all of a sudden we have more darkness. Here's a look at where we are this morning. We have the uh, upper level low I mentioned earlier in the show that was down here. Now it's all the way up here. Most of the heavy rain is over into Idaho and just clipping south uh, eastern section of uh, Washington there south of uh, Pullman. Here's a look at our radar closer to home. Light rain showing up over the Cascades. Again, I can't find a reporting site that says, hey, we got some, but radar is showing it's there. That's going to be dropping south along the Cascades and then fizzling, fizzling out during the morning. So here we are at 1030. Not solid clouds, but morning cloudiness, if you will, that will continue to break up. And as we get rolling in the afternoon, I think we'll just go uh, mostly sunny uh, eventually this afternoon for a really nice day. Here are the temperatures right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Newport, the weather site, the weather station started acting up yesterday. It's not 35 below in Newport, but that would make you put on the boots and the gloves and, and, do, the, and do the stomping out the door, right? 61 in Salem, 57 up in Kelso. Here's a look. That's my theme today. You know, the boots and the gloves and the stomping out the door. Morning cloudiness, partly cloudy afternoon, low 70s in Salem, McMinnville and Corvallis. Similar numbers up through southwest Washington. Might be as warm as 75 in uh, some spots, Vancouver and Portland, again, winds light from the southwest. So really comfortable weather, mid 70s today and tomorrow. Of course, tomorrow, the first full day of fall. And then we warm back up 80 Saturday, 86 Sunday, Monday, 80 Tuesday, and we cool back down the mid part of next week. That's my forecast. Love it. All right.